Hey, what's up, guys? It's Glover Quinn here, former NFL defensive back, now your coach here in the DB room. To all my subscribers, welcome back. And if you are new to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome to the DB room. Make sure you go and check out the welcome video. If you like this content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing that's going on on this channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about 11 personnel versus a nickel defense. It's a lot to cover. Let's jump right into it so we don't run out of time. Let's go. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking 11 personnel versus our nickel package. As you can see, 11 personnel, let's talk about it. One running back, one tight end in the game. We see that here. Three wide receivers are in the game, so let's take a look. See our one running back, our one tight end. Now we have three wide receivers in the game. So this third receiver replaces the F from 21 personnel. And if we were in 12 personnel with two tight ends, that replaces the second tight end. So this guy is a slot receiver. He is another wide receiver that they bring in to enhance their pass game so they have more fast guys on the field, okay? So if they're going to be in, in 11 personnel with three wide receivers, then we have to make an adjustment on our defense. So we have to go into what we call our sub package on defense. We got to make a sub. We got to take this wheel linebacker out of the game, and we got to bring in our nickel and we're going to make him yellow why because the same way on def on offense when the tight end and yellow moves we had to be aware on defense when the nickel in yellow moves we have to be aware and i'll explain why right now look at strength call versus the close call going from our regular personnel the close call goes to the tight end so this is a close left call but the nickel is to the right so that comes to the strength call. The passing strength is the nickel. The nickel makes a nickel left or a nickel right call so we can locate him and declare the passing strength. So in this case, it's a closed left, nickel right. So the passing strength. These guys over here are two wide receivers. This is one receiver and one tight end. So the passing strength is over here. The nickel is over here, meaning if the slot go in motion, the nickel has to go with him. Now the passing strength changes. So now it'd be nickel left. And that'd be important once we start talking coverages because a lot of times the nickel will carry the strength of the coverage. Okay, so that's why the nickel's in yellow. So when he moves, we are aware that the nickel is moving. That's the strength call versus our close call. Okay, let's talk some of these things over here. Back, okay, let's talk to back and far. The same way we had in our regular set, where we had the full back, he was close to the tight end and, and far from the tight end, it's the same thing in the shotgun, okay? Shotgun is when the quarterback is not under center. He's back here now, so he's in the shotgun formation. So the, the halfback is far from the tight end. So he's in a far set right now, okay? If we put the halfback over here, he would be in a near set. He would be close to the tight end. Very important that you understand far and near, okay? So you see this other word up here, you say chow. What is chow? Chow is cheated out wide. Cheated out wide, meaning a normal alignment for the back is right here in this B gap, okay? So you, these are gaps. This is the A gap, this first gap right here. The second gap is the B gap. This third gap is the C gap, okay? So the normal alignment is this back in this B gap. If he gets out here, now he's cheated out wide. Why do they cheat him out wide? So he can get into the pass game quickly, okay? He can quickly get out the backfield and get into the pass game. Very rarely do they run the ball from the back being cheated out wide, okay? And that's another reason why you really want to understand far and near because a lot of the runs are going to come from a far set because they want to run behind the tight end 
So they put him far and they bring him across and run behind the tight end. Okay. And these are going to be longer developing plays because he has to come from here, cross the ball downhill, as opposed to being near to the tight end. These could be some of our quick hitting plays. Get the snap, hand it off. He can go straight downhill. Okay. And the reason why they want to run to the tight end a lot of times, let's take a look at these numbers here. If you look to this side over here, the offense has one, two, three guys, and the defense has one, two, three guys, okay, in the box right now. So if they run to this side, guess what? This safety has to come into play, okay, to try to make this tackle. If they started in the near set, let's look over here. They got one, two guys, and we have one, two, three guys, okay? We're not going to include the center in this one, two, three three guys over there too. So now if they run this way, we're going to get this tackle upfield. He's going to be here. And now the Mike is going to have an easy tackle right there on the halfback. So a lot of times they're going to try to run this away. Very important to understand that. Okay. Near, far. Chow to the tight end side. And it could be Chow over here if they want to get him out wide. A lot of times they'll do it to the tight end side so they can try to hide him. He can hide because they don't want you to know that he's child. They want to sneak up on you so they can get him out of the backfield. Okay, moving on. Let's talk bunch versus cluster. Okay, let's take this S and move him over here. Put this half back away because we don't want to talk four strong right now. And now you see we got three guys over here in like a little bunch. So that is what you call a bunch formation. Um, it doesn't include anybody in the backfield. The X is still backside. We got three guys, and these guys can be configured any way you want them. You can have the slot on the ball and the tight end inside. You can have the Z inside and the tight end outside. You can have that configuration however you want it to be. But when you have three guys bunched up like that, that formation is called a bunch, okay? So now let's put the, the, the Z back where he's at. And now let's put the tight end, I mean, let's put the half back in the near set, okay? Now we got a near set and our Z can move, right? So we move our Z down and now we have what you call a cluster, okay? We're gonna call this cluster because it's involving a guy in the backfield, okay? And you say, well, it's kind of like a bunch. One should be called the other. It doesn't really matter. It's just when you go to the sidelines or when you're having a conversation with someone, if I say they were in a bunch, I want you to think it was guys out wide. If I say they were in a cluster, I want you to think, oh, it was including someone in the backfield. OK, so that's a bunch versus cluster. This is a cluster right here. OK, we move this guy out. Now we have a bunch. OK, now we have a bunch. Let's put them back. And you have to be aware, this is this is when that far and near stuff come into play. Because they can line up like this right here, right? And be in a normal set. And then all of a sudden, this guy motions down and they can get to a cluster on the run. So there's calls that you have against a normal set. And there's calls that you have when they get into the cluster. So you have to understand, okay, we got a near set. We're to the Z side. So this guy can move. We have to be alert if he motions, we're going to our cluster checks, okay? Have to understand that stuff. That is why it's important to understand far and near back and with the Z being able to move. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk trips versus speed trips. Okay, so you look to this side right here and you see, well, we'll go speed trips first since we are already kind of there. We'll just take this Z and put him over here. Now you see we got three speed guys over here, right? So trips is when you got three guys on one side in the formation, okay? Three guys, that gives us trips, okay? The fact that it's all three speed guys, we're gonna call this speed trips, okay? So now you know, when we're talking and I say, hey, they was in speed, speed trips, you should know, man, they had all three wide receivers on one side and there was only a tight end on the back side, okay? Speed trips. So what is trips? Trips, we're gonna take the Z or the S, the slot moving back over here, and we're going to take the Z and move them over here. Not going to work for strong right now. And now we just got three regular guys on the same side. One, two, three. That is a trips formation, okay? So speed trips, you got all three of your speed guys. Trips, you just have three 
guys. Could be tight end, could actually be a running back, however they want to configure it. But you got three guys. That's a trips formation, okay? So that stuff is very, very, very important because we have to be able to communicate what's going on, who's in the game. Is it trips? Is it speed trips? Is it bunch? Is it cluster? Is it far back? Is it near back? Is it child back? Okay, so one of the concepts that we get a lot out of this cluster, I just want to throw one route concept in here real quick. Okay, one of the concepts that we get that is a huge concept and it's, it's a simple play, but it's hard to defend is this play that we call a snag 7-3. So we're going to get our tight end running a corner route. We're going to get our ZY receiver running this little snag route. And then we're going to get our halfback running this flat route. Okay. This is what you call a snag 7-3. Snag is by the Z. 7 is by the tight end seven route and then the three route is the flat the back going to the flat there's a huge concept for them okay and it's very important that we understand that because it's going to come into play when we start getting into coverages okay we're going to talk about that route a lot because it's a big route in the nfl you see it a lot of times and they can get to it a lot of ways they can start out in speed trips with a near set, motion this guy over, now they're in a cluster. See that? They can start out with a four strong bunch, okay? Four strong bunch with a cluster, I guess you can want to call it. Motion them over, now they're in a regular cluster. They can start out in normal, all right? Motion him down, now they're in the cluster, okay? The big key, notice in the back. The back is chow, we got to be alert, okay? So that right there was just a quick little overview of 11 personnel against a nickel defense, understanding bunch, cluster, understanding far back, child back, near back, understanding the strength call with the nickel and the close call with the tight end, understanding all those different things. So just continue to study up, continue to work on this stuff, continue to watch these videos so that once we move on and we start to put in more things and just start to learn. Like I said, I just want to teach you guys terminology. I don't want to get so much into super scheme um, because schemes vary, but some terminology is just things are the same regardless of where you go. So understanding these simple things is going to be huge for your growth, your knowledge, and just understanding of the game. So if you like these videos, make sure you hit the like button, share them with a friend, and until next time, peace.